Hey, Attached to Hygiene listeners, Jack here to once again ask all of you, our loyal listeners, to fill out our listener survey. We've shortened the survey to just four questions, which should take you less than one minute to fill out. And we're up in the ante by offering all five of our sustainability and CSR documents on the hygiene industry to you for free as a thank you for filling out the survey. That's a glossary an additional terminology document, two white papers, and an overview of eco-labels sent from me directly to your inbox. And the only thing you need to do to get them is take less than one minute of your time to answer four questions. That's it. I've included the link to the survey at the top of the show notes for this episode, and you can also find it by going to attachedtohygiene.com, which is all one word, and clicking on the button at the top of the page that says, take our listener survey. I'll even take a short break here for you to hit pause, go to the show notes, click the link, and take less than one minute to fill out the survey. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for your time. And now we'll get into the episode. Over the last decade, the absorbent hygiene industry has seen absorbent cores evolve in several ways. The long-standing trend toward thinner cores has continued with the introduction of low fluff and fluff-free designs. In addition, channel core and compound core designs have been adopted by multiple manufacturers. Given all these new designs and options, and that the absorbent core is the most expensive part of the diaper, it makes sense that producers, like you, would want to consider switching to a design that functions just as well or better than a traditional core, but is cheaper or easier to produce. But given how important the absorbent core is in the function of the diaper, it is vital not to start making changes without considering all the variables. Luckily, Bostic is here to help. Welcome to Attach to Hygiene, the podcast that enables you to grow your knowledge and influence in the absorbent hygiene industry. My name is Jack Hughes, and my mission is to help you, the absorbent hygiene article producer, design and produce the best possible products to meet the needs of your customers. On today's episode, we're speaking with Tefane Rambo, Technical Support Manager in the EMEA region for Bostic. Tefane has spent the last four years helping our customers solve issues with their products, and through her work on these projects, has become our regional expert on absorbent cores. Today, she'll give us a little history lesson on absorbent cores before explaining the different core designs currently being used in the market, what some of the advantages and disadvantages are for choosing those designs, some challenges you might face when changing core designs, and what she thinks the future of absorbent cores are. She'll be sharing all of this so that you can be fully prepared if and when you decide to modify your own core design. Joining me today to discuss absorbent cores for hygiene products is Tefane Rambo, our technical support manager for the EMEA region here at Bostic. Tefane, welcome to the show. Hey, Jack. Thank you. I'd like to ask all of our guests to introduce themselves, their background in the industry, and also ask, like to ask them what they like most about working in the industry. So I'll direct that question to you. So can you tell us uh, a little bit about your background and what you like about working in the hygiene industry? Yeah, sure. As you mentioned, I'm a technical account manager for the EMEA region, taking care of the hygiene industry. I'm based in our R&D center in France at Venet, one hour in the north of Paris. And I joined this position for an and a half year ago. But let's say it was not really my first experience with Bostik or with this hygiene market. If we go back in 2012, I was still a a student in chemical engineering school. And uh, I had the chance to make a break uh, for a one year internship in a company. At that time, I really wanted to discover Japan, and this is how I arrived at Bostik Nita in the R&D lab at Osaka, already in hygiene business. However, I was on the product development part, developing new adhesives. So this is how my journey at Bostik really started a few years ago. 
Regarding what I like in this industry is really the complexity of the project. Everyone know, and most of them have probably used a baby diaper or a femcare product, but they really do not realize all the technology that's behind it. Every time I talk about uh, my job to people or that are, they are all surprised to know that there is such uh, research inside. They only see a product that you use for a few hours and then you throw away, but uh, there is a real in development. And this market is full of challenges. We can see it evolving almost from day to day. So this is really what I like. Yeah, that was one of the things I took for granted before coming to Bostic was just how complex, whether it be a menstrual health pad, period pad, a an adult incontinence diaper, a baby diaper, or kind of anything in between in the absorbent hygiene realm. They're very complex products. They have a lot of different technologies in them. There's dozens of companies contributing to a specific product outside of the actual manufacturer and each of those products has their own r d behind it and lots of hours of research and resources put into them so yeah it's something that people definitely i think take for granted you know not just in hygiene but in many products but yeah as someone as people who are in the industry we know how complex these products can be and how many little details you need to get right in order to have a product perform for, as you said, just a, a couple of hours to to make people's lives a little more convenient. Yeah. And I, I didn't know that you had kind of interned at with our team in Japan. I had no idea about that. So I, I learned something new today. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, we're here to discuss absorbent cores for absorbent products. And this may seem kind of obvious, but I'd like to start by having you explain what the absorbent core system is just for anyone listening to the podcast who may be relatively new to the industry or new to this part of an absorbent product. And then kind of talk a little bit about why the core is important, what materials are used to ensure that the core itself works as effectively as possible and kind of what role some of those materials play. Yeah, sure. Uh, better to start from the beginning with the basics, let's say. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the core system is a very complex. There is a lot of material and they can have direct or indirect impact. So if you take the diaper, you will uh, first have the, the top sheet. It's really the, the first layer that is against baby skin. And the role of this layer is to facilitate the liquid acquisition to the core. So it can be used as carrier of skin health additives such as uh, lotion or aloe vera, for example. It really affects the consumer perception of softness for the diaper. Then below the top sheet, uh, you can have ADL, that is acquisition distribution layer and that creates low density void space beneath the top sheet to keep the skin dry. It also enables a rapid fluid absorption to help minimize leaks during the reweight. On the total opposite side of the diaper, you have the back sheet that's working like a barrier film. You can find different kind of uh, back sheet that can be breathable or non-breathable substrate. And then in the middle of that, you have the core itself. And it's mostly composed of the mix of a fluff and SAP. So the fluff pulp is here to distribute the fluid and assist with the core integrity. It improves the core efficiency through rapid absorption and distribution. And it also improves the core matrix stability to prevent cracking and slumping. The SAP, that is a super absorbent polymer, absorbs liquid slowly, but it can retain a real large volume relative to weight, even under pressure. So this is really that the core itself in the middle. But uh, you also need a core wrap. The core wrap is here to maintain core integrity during processing by uh, containing the fluff and the SAP matrix. And of course, it provides stability in use by containing all the core materials. 
On some diaper, you will also have wetness indicator. This technology helps the final consumer to know when the pad is wet. And of course, last but not least, you have the adhesives. And the role of the adhesive is to keep everything in place. But you will not have every adhesive working in every application in every core. This is where the complexity of adhesives is coming. So if my count is right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight different materials, potentially eight different suppliers that are going into this just one part of a absorbent product. So as you said, a very complex piece of, of material or a complex part of the diaper that has a, you know, arguably the most important role to play of the diaper that everyone is having to deal with and create and make sure that it's functioning properly. You mentioned one thing, and I uh, wanted to make sure that we kind of mention what it is just for our audience in case it's a term that some people haven't used before, or maybe they're using a different term. But you mentioned the term cracking of a core. And I know we'll talk about testing the core in a bit, and, and Bosic does our own test, and, and there are tests in the industry as well. But can you just explain what cracking is for a core? What we call the cracking is really when you look at your core, Sometimes after, let's say, uh, being in, in movement, in the middle of the core, you can observe a, a cracking, what we call a crack. So this is really a separation in the core because at some point, after some time, the core can uh, separate if the core integrity is not uh, well in place. So that separation then obviously compromises the absorption capability of the core and prevents it from functioning properly and can lead to leaks and obviously no one no one wants that so that you know the goal of of adhesives and some of these other materials is really to avoid that cracking correct yes exactly great so as anyone who's listened to our podcast for a while would know we categorize consumer trends overall into five different categories or what we call the five c's and those are comfort convenience confidence consistency and cost and given the importance of the core in the function of the diaper and ultimately the consumer experience with an absorbent product, how does the core need to behave in order to support or meet the needs around those five different consumer needs? Yeah, so first, a consumer, when they buy a product with a core, they expect comfortable fit, which means that the core should be comfortable for the wearer. It means no negative impact in terms of uh, softness of the product, no sag. It needs, of course, to retain whatever it is as quickly as possible and for as long as possible without leaving or the skin becoming wet. Then it also uh, needs to be efficient for the producer this time to manufacture. And we saw that there is a growing need to the product to be more and more uh, sustainable by uh, using more sustainable materials. We can have also a weight reduction of the core by reducing, for example, the fluff amount inside the core and overall the thickness of the core. And this will have a positive impact on the wearer in terms of comfort and discretion but it also have positive impact in terms of sustainability because you can have more diapers per pack and so more diapers per truck and less bulk to dispose of when the product is finished with it. Reducing the fluff amount inside the core itself can be considered as negative because this is one of the few natural products that we have directly on the diaper but this uh, trend to reduce the fluff have also very positive impact. Yeah, so that's a big trade-off that producers have to keep in mind. <laughs> and it's something I probably hadn't really thought about, but given that the fluff is a natural material or made from natural resources, reducing the amount of that <laughs> means reducing the percentage of natural components in the diaper, potentially. So yeah, that, I hadn't really thought about that. That's a good point. You mentioned the reduction of fluff, and obviously that is something that is not new to the industry. It's been happening for a long time. 
And I was wondering if you could touch on kind of the history of the evolution of cores and how cores, the design of cores have evolved over the last maybe 10 to 20 years to what we see today and some of the bigger trends in core. As we say, the thinner core design is a long-term trend. So from a mix of uh, ratio SAP fluff at 50-50, we moved to 17-30 and then 80-20. So 80% SAP, 20% fluff. However, the less fluff you include in your design, the more prone the core gets to crack and core integrity become an issue. Today, there is even some diaper that are designed as fluff free. But if you remove all the fluff, in that case, you need an alternative system to all the SAP in place. And of course, SAP needs to be in place, but also still to do its job. So yeah, we can see really an evolution in terms of uh, reducing the fluff content to have a thinner and a thinner core. And when the kind of fluff to SAP ratio decreases and you have more or only SAP, that obviously impacts the absorption speed, right? Not necessarily the capacity, but the speed of absorption because SAP takes a little longer to absorb any sort of insult than fluff would. And so there's that trade-off that has to be made or other technologies need to be considered in order to speed up the absorption speed of the core at that point. Yes, we found some uh, new design that were uh, developed to be less or fluff free. So, for example, in Asia, you have a real train that are a compound and pre compound core. So they are fluff free and they most commonly are made offline in advance. This is what we call the pre compound core. And in some cases, they can be made inline. This is the compound core. Instead of the fluff, there is the SAP that is uh, sprinkled on layer of a isle of non-woven. So this is one trend you can see in Asia to change and to uh, increase the performance of a free diaper. You have also the core channel that pop up more in Western uh, Europe. It's an optimized core for diapers with some empty zones in matching direction. You have the upper and lower core wrap that are laminated to create the channels in the middle of the core. So this is typically done through modification of a drum forming system, and it can be done with or without fluff pulp. Innovative design core like that can also come uh, with new substrates. As we said, today there is also a real growth in all the renewable and bio-based material. And you will also have a new design that are more niche product with the hybrid diaper where you can remove the core or even smart diaper that indicate when the diaper are spent. So there is a lot of new development that are going on the core with or without fluff. Yeah, it's, it's you know, we talked about how complex the core is just in and of itself. But then, as you said, there are companies adding in new sustainable materials or or new you know, biosource materials. Indicators and sensors is a big one that we've seen in the industry. You mentioned wetness indicator, but you also have some of the biosensors and, and whatnot in mainly in built incontinence products, but we're seeing them in, in actually menstrual health products as well. And then, yeah, adding to that is some of the products we've seen on the market with removable cores is just continues to add to the complexity of this already very complex <laughs> system in the absorbent product. You mentioned, you went through the history of the different kind of fluff to SAP ratios, moving into fluff free, then compound and channel cores and, and all the different kind of variables in there. And you mentioned, or you alluded to that there's, you're kind of making trade-offs for some of these. You, you know, you're, you need to potentially have different materials in there to absorb if you're removing fluff, or there's different things to consider when you have channels in the core. Kind of briefly talk through some of the advantages or disadvantages of the different designs and fluff to SAP ratios that you've already discussed. As explained earlier, 
reducing the fluff amount in the core can make the diaper thinner. And this has really positive impact on the comfort of the diaper that is uh, less bulky and also an impact on the confidence as it's more discreet. This will have positively impact also in terms of cost because in terms of logistic, we have more diaper per pack. But the warning is really that with a no or low fluff content, it's more difficult to hold the SAP powder in place and SAP stabilization become critical to avoid the core cracking. Compound and pre-compound core have advantage of really better integrity in comparison to non-optimized fluff containing core. They have lighter weight and they may be perceived as softer or more braceable by the consumer. On the other way, one warning point on this design of core is the tend to lose SAP. Without fluff to hold it in place, the SAP can check loose during production and it can also be challenging to spray the SAP accurately at high spin. So being fluff-free, compound core cannot uh, rely on the fluff fiber to pull in liquid and LD absorption. Instead of that, they increase the amount of SAP and this one will add additional cost. For the core channel, this specific design provides really better freed and air circulation, so it improves the dryness and the skill wellness. It also reduces the sagging and improves the core integrity with less bulk encroach area. However, if you want to have uh, core channels on your line, it requires a transformation of the drum forming system. So this is additional cost and the producer really need to ensure that there is no presence of SAP or fluff in the channels area. If you have any of that, then you can be faced on an issue in the performance of your channels. So it's really mandatory to make sure that the channels are maintained when SAP is swollen and the core is weight to make sure that the performance of your diaper will be at the expected target. So a lot of trade-offs. There's, there's, there seems to be pluses and minuses to each design you were describing, whether it be compound core or channel cores, and you kind of started with the advantages and I was thinking to myself for both of those, I was like, I wonder why people aren't doing more of that. And but it, <laughs> as you said, there's there's complexities with both and certainly downsides to both. If you can't get certain things perfectly right, or maybe you don't have the flexibility to modify your line as some other companies do it. Yeah, that that would explain why some of these technologies are still a little limited in either regional or certain product types. So as you were explaining, especially compound core, I was like, wow, it sounds like a great technology, but then you explain the downsides and, and it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, definitely. It's always to find the right balance between cost, between performance, and also between what your consumer is looking for. Because from one region to another, the consumer will not uh, look at the same performance or the same uh, design, let's say, of the product. Yeah, well, and that's a great segue for my next question, which is what designs or fluff to SAP ratios do we see in certain regions? And do you have any insights into why we may see certain technologies in one region and as opposed to another? So the traditional uh, wrap core containing fluff are still global. You can see it everywhere around the globe. The difference is more about the fluff content. So we saw a trend to reduce the fluff amount, but you still have higher fluff content as a standard in some region like Middle East Africa or Latin America. This is more cultural stuff. In this region, there is still the idea that the thicker it is, the better it will absorb. If we talk about the core channel, this is now a standard among the global brain player globally. It's however the marine core design in Western Europe among branded private label and uh, retail products. Compound and print compound core are only used in Asia and especially in China. It appeared for the first time around 10 years ago because the producer, they were facing issue with the core cracking using fluff. So they replaced 
the standard fluff by a kind of uh, fluffy PET non-woven. The cost for the producer was much higher. So it was really a challenge for them to make these replacements. But in parallel, thanks to this new fluffy PET non-woven, it reduced significantly the complaint from the consumer. So all of a sudden, all the producer changed to pre bunker in the region. One thing that was we had mentioned in, I think, our episodes with Rocky Ye and Tina Lee, they were talking about compound core and how because all of the producers or many of the producers in China have moved or in Asia have moved to this compound or pre-compound core design, that means the machine manufacturers have all modified their machines to account for that as well. And so if anyone in a region like Africa or Latin America or even Europe is buying a machine made in China, it's usually coming with that compound or pre-compound core capability, which means that that technology is starting to spread a little bit outside of Asia because of the machine designs that are coming out of China. So I thought that was really interesting. It's not necessarily a change being driven by consumers or really even by producers. It's being pushed by the machine manufacturers and and who's choosing (laughs) to buy their machines. Yeah, clearly. So that's uh, certainly a lot of cultural and regional variables playing a role in in the core design selection for producers and just adds to the complexity and and the things that producers and others in the industry really have to stay on top of to understand what designs are going to work best in different regions. Towards the beginning, you met, you kind of went through the list of all the different materials in the core. I think we listed you listed seven or eight different materials, one of those being adhesives. I don't necessarily want to make this episode all about core adhesives and, and we won't, but I did want to touch on kind of the role that adhesives play in the core system, because they do play a very important role in kind of keeping everything together. So I was hoping you could talk a, a little bit about the role that adhesives play in the core and how they interact with the the other six or seven materials that go into a core design. As we said, adhesive plays a critical role in the core structure. So it bonds the core component together and the, provide the structure of the core itself. The core is used to stabilize the mix of fluff and SAP. And when the fluff is not used, as we saw earlier on the different design, the adhesive is really critical to SAP stabilization. It's also used to seal the core wrap and bond adjacent material to prevent shifting. And of course, adhesive is applied to the back sheet to help also to limit the shifting of the core. So when you have a high amount of fluff, like uh, 50% fluff, 50% SAP, depending on the performance requirement of the producer, you can use a standard construction adhesive or a core integrity adhesive. But when you are going with lower amount of fluff, core integrity adhesive is really mandatory for SAP mobilization and to make sure that your core will reach the performance you are looking for. If you are a fluffy core, then you need an adhesive that must immobilize the SAP, the former function of the fluff. And in the same time, the adhesive should not impact the wet integrity and enable the SAP swelling. So the adhesive must enable wicking and maintaining the core integrity. For the core channel, it's another different story because adhesives used in core channel have the role to create and maintain the channel at both dry and wet situation. And the channel must not break under the pressure when the SAP swells. So uh, the requirement for adhesive for core channel is different than adhesive for core integrity. Finally, on a compound core, adhesive is used to bond the fluffy non-woven in the middle of the core to the top and layer button. And also, adhesive is here to keep the SAP in place. So depending on the design of your core, you will not have uh, the same need in terms of adhesives. So one thing you mentioned there was kind of the role of a channel core adhesive compared to a general core integrity adhesive. And so does that mean that you could see 
more than one type of adhesive in a core design, depending on that design? Depending of the performance you are looking for, you can have different adhesive on your core. If we take the example of uh, core channels, you can use core integrity to make, let's say, the core with the mix of fluff and SAP. But for the channel part, really for the channel bonding, you need a specific adhesive that makes sure that the channel will stay in place and will not break. This is uh, really important to make sure that the design of this core is used in the best way. Of course, depending on the line settings you have, sometimes you don't have enough tank to make a different adhesive on your line. And this is where we can really help you as Bostik to choose the best adhesive that will fit the best with your core design, depending on what's available on your line. Yeah, so definitely there have been many manufacturers wanting to move or trying to move over to, to channel cores. But obviously, as you said, it, it adds this level of complexity. It adds new designs to the line, new materials to the line potentially, and another adhesive into the mix as well. I and mean, obviously, you know, we know a lot about that. We can help with that. But just a whole other set of things to think about when you're kind of considering the pros and cons of potentially changing your core design overall or changing specifically to a channel core design. So we've kind of gone through all the different components and some of the roles that they play. We know now how complex the combination of all these components can be. And obviously, if you're going to make design changes or modifications, it can be a real challenge to know that everything is going to work and, and how it's going to work together and, and, and whatnot. So testing obviously has to be a really big part of making sure that a core is performing as intended. So can you talk about some of the different tests that producers can do or can try to make sure that their cores are performing as intended and, and meeting the needs of consumers? Yes, because core is very complex and any uh, small change can have huge impact. So the producer, they can test acquisition speed. So it means how fast the liquid can be absorbed under the pressure. There is also distribution test. This one is to check how well the entire core is utilized after acquisition. Does the liquid spread or does it stay in one place? You have also the reweight test effectiveness of the core to keep the wetness away from the skin under pressure. Finally, you also have the wicking that is here to understand how far can the liquid be transported within the core. So this is a kind of four basic tests that producer can perform to make sure that they are still at the good level in terms of performance. We just did a webinar on core and we saw that even kind of given the different areas that these four tests can cover, the poll we did during the webinar, not everyone's doing all four tests. It kind of varies. I think there were two that were very common. I think it might have been acquisition and rewet, but there and then some are doing distribution and wicking or some are doing all four. But um, obviously doing more tests means more time, more resources, and uh, you know, not necessarily putting those resources directly into a product. So you can kind of understand why you might pick and choose which tests to do. But obviously each one of those has a different role to play and ultimately has a different consumer satisfaction impact if you do or don't perform well in one of those tests. So yeah, I guess it, it makes sense. But kind of, again, we go back to those trade-offs of deciding what to do and what not to do um, within a core and even in the testing area. So because we focus on adhesives, a lot of the tests that Bostic runs on cores are a bit different to those four tests that you just mentioned. So can you share with the audience the different tests that we use to ensure the integrity of the core and the core adhesive as it all works together? Yeah, so today there are multiple methods used to measure the core integrity in a baby diaper, a feminine pad, or adult incontinence product. So we already talk a lot about core integrity, and these tests uh, range from using different tools to employ very complex equipment to very simple one. And all of these tests, they are done through uh, spinning, checking, or swinging. 
and they can provide some measure of quantitative data for cork cracking. However, they do not reflect the reality of abuse that a cork endures before an insult. So uh, at Bostik, we have more holistic approach to core integrity testing, and we add an extra step to our method to create a method that we call conditioned core cracking test. The process is very simple. So first, uh, you define insert points on a dry diaper. Then you made the preconditioning. So you precondition the diaper through simulating the movement of wearer while the diaper is still dry. After that, you wet at the defined insult point with saline solution. And finally, you repeat the movement of uh, simulation until the core crack appears. So as we said before, the crack is really like the separation of the core. And we know that core cracking can result in a poor core absorption and uh, ultimately uh, leakage. This is why robust core integrity testing really helps the manufacturer to understand how well the core design can withstand the stress of product user. This is the way we are doing core cracking at Bostik. But it's not the only test we have. We talk a lot about a uh, core channel, and as core channels is very specific, they also have a specific test. We have the dynamic peel to test the core channel, and so we test the channels under wet and dry condition, and this test helps us to understand the capability to retain the integrity of core channels when wet. We also have immersion tests for core channels, so we take a diaper, we dive it in saline solution for five minutes. We take the diaper out and remove the excess of moisture. And then the diaper is laid on the table at room for temperature for 24 hours. The channel should be in place and not broken after 24 hours. We also talk about a compound and pre-compound core, and this one also have their specific test method that it's SAP loss. So we take a diaper and we cut it in half. We check the diaper to see the amount of SAP loss and the test shows ability to retain SAP. We have really dedicated tests for any uh, specific design. Yeah, we cover a lot of bases there with our internal tests and obviously with something we're we're more than willing to do for our any of our customers that uh, are looking to understand the, the performance of their core adhesive and and how making a certain change or uh, in the design or the material choice can can impact that. So thank you for, for going over those. So we've covered the materials themselves. We've covered how they work together in the designs, and now we've covered testing that both producers and an adhesive provider like Bostic can do, but. When a producer is looking to make a change, it can lead to certain challenges, you know, whether you're changing the ratio, whether you're changing the design itself. And we've alluded to some of these already, but I was wondering if you can outline some of the challenges that producers should really keep in mind when they're considering making a change to their absorbent core so they could know some of the potential pitfalls before they decide to make that change. First, let's talk about the material used for the wrap. So non-woven is commonly used and this has a fast absorption. So it doesn't reduce the risk of cracking and so leakage. On the other way, you have tissue that can be used. This one has a lower absorption, but there is a positive impact on reweight and core integrity. So if producers are thinking about changing the substrate, this is what they need to keep in mind on non-woven versus tissue. If we look more about the adhesive application itself, applying adhesive directly on the top of the core can impede overall core performance. On the other way, bottom core adhesive application can increase the amount of abuse the diaper can take and speeds up absorption for better core performance. Of course, there is no negative correlation to acquisition or reweight and a positive impact on integrity if you have a wider application dispels the notion that 
that are more adhesive is the bad thing. On the other way, if you reduce the weight of the application pattern, this may decrease the cost, but also reduces core integrity and overall the performance of the core. And last but not least, the type of application, if you are doing a direct or a non-direct application, this will have also an impact because if you are using a multi-slot, for example, application, this will really help you in the performance of your core. But all what I say about adhesive application are very, let's say, standard challenges that you can face, but any design is very specific and depending of what you are using for your core, this can have different impact. So really, if we want to sum up, our recommendation is if you want to make any change on your line about your core, just directly contact us because we will be the one that can really help you to make the best recommendation to make sure that the change on your core will not impact the performance of your product. Yeah, I think we, I hope our customers would agree, but certainly our approach is that We'd rather you contact us beforehand so that we can help you anticipate or even work through any potential problems as opposed to finding out later on that you have a problem and then that leading to, to further delays in rolling out any sort of design change or, or material change. So obviously we have people like you and your teammates at Bostic that this is your, you know, part of your job is to help customers make these, these kind of informed decisions and for you particularly around the core. So yeah, obviously, we, we would encourage people to, to reach out to us before you make changes as opposed to after so that we can help anticipate any any sort of potential issues or um, troubleshoot any problems before they even happen. So we've covered a lot there on the overall core and, and kind of the, the materials used, some of the changes and, and trends in materials, the designs being considered and, and that we're seeing in the industry testing that you can do and now some of the trade-offs that are present if you decide to make changes or decide to use different materials in your core design. But as someone who is the core expert in Bostic, especially in your region of EMEA, I kind of want to ask your opinion or uh, on, on some items. So first, I want to start by just kind of asking, what are you seeing that is maybe new or exciting in Absorbent Core and trends that you find really interesting in the market right now? So it's not a train only about core, but more about all the business, let's say. But all the discussion around sustainability are very exciting for me. I already mentioned it, uh, renewable or bio-based material are used more and more by producer and core matrix for sure is impacted by this trend. So we saw that there is usually two materials that are the fluff and the SAP. The fluff comes mainly from trees, so it really helps the producer to claim there is uh, X percent of the diaper that is made by natural material. Some producers are going uh, further with certification like uh, FSC, the Forest Stewardship Council, or they are doing uh, actions to preserve environment, uh, for example, to support uh, association for the reforestation of forest. And there is also another approach that is uh, to use the unbleached fluff to avoid uh, additional unnecessary treatment on the product. And you can recognize this product with a core that is already a little bit browny and not white as we used to see it. Regarding the SAP, it's a bit more complicated. So there is development of bio-based SAP and new product arrived in the market. But there is still a room of improvement and innovation. And I'm very curious to see what will arrive in the coming years on the market to help making the core more sustainable. Yeah, given the amount and weight of materials that go into a core, yeah, that obviously any sort of change that you can make in the realm of sustainability is going to have a huge impact on the overall percentage of a specific product that is considered bio-based or biosourced or sustainable. And uh, obviously, since that's the part of the diaper that deals most with the insult, the other part to consider is how you separate 
the insult from the materials if you're going to go recycling or compostable or even incineration you have to kind of consider all that stuff but i think that's a very exciting trend for sure um, i know it's one that you're passionate about you're one of the, the leaders in our organization around getting trained for sustainability and and both internally and through external parties so i thought that that might be one of your answers but yeah <laughs> I, I agree that that's you know as with many things, that's that's we're seeing trends around sustainability. So seeing where that continues to evolve will be a very interesting in the coming years. So seeing as you're the core expert for the region and you've worked with many of our customers around their core, we, we don't want to reveal anything about proprietary from our customers. But I'm just curious if if you've seen or come across any interesting challenges that you've helped customers overcome around their absorbent cores or or their designs um, as, as they've been working on their core? Yeah. So uh, when the, the code channel arrived in the European market, we put a lot of efforts to, to define new test methods specific to code channel application. Uh, this method has to be representative of all that the adhesive could undergo. And in parallel, we developed the right adhesive can, that can achieve uh, targeted performance. This uh, unique solution was tried at one of our customers. And thanks to it, this customer was able to improve significantly the core channel performance. And they also make add-on reduction in the same time. So this was a real great success for us. We were all really happy. Uh, to the work done by the Bostic team who developed and implemented this solution. Yeah, and I know that that initiative was certainly recognized within Bostic as well in a couple of different ways. But yeah, certainly when you can not only help a customer meet their design needs, but then also save them some money and resources on materials, it's kind of a win-win there for a customer. So that's great. I want to end here by kind of you know, asking you to maybe pull out your crystal ball and maybe tell us where you think the future of absorbent cores in hygiene products is going. Not an easy one. I'm not magician, but just thinking like that, I see two paths that can grow in the future for core. So first, uh, it's the smart diapers with a sensor to inform when the diaper is spent. This sensor can really interest parents for their baby, but nevertheless, the opportunity for me is really for the adult incontinence market. Using these diapers in institution would allow the caregivers to change diaper only when it's necessary. It would save time for them, but above all, comfort for the user. Indeed, the user would have this diaper change as soon as it is wet, and moreover, the user would not be manipulated unnecessarily if the diaper is still clean. So I think smart diapers so that interact with the core will be one of the paths. A second pass I have in mind is the hybrid diaper that we can see more and more in the diaper market. So for the ones that are not familiar with hybrid diaper, it's kind of a mix between disposable and reusable diaper. So visually, it's very similar to the close reusable diaper. But inside, uh, there is a core insert that you can place on the diaper. So this part is the disposable one. Thanks to that, the parents can reduce their waste as only part of the diaper will end up in the trash, the, the core part. And developing bio-based or biodegradable core usable in this kind of design will be an additional step to be more sustainable. So this is really the, the two paths I can see maybe uh, to be developed in the future. Yeah, and I, I've heard other people, We I think we had an episode last year sometime with, with Avgal, and they, they kind of mentioned that modular core removal diaper as being one that could have a big impact on sustainability in the future of the industry. And obviously, if you can make a portion of the diaper reusable, it's going to have a huge impact on the amount of waste being produced in the industry, but also allow that convenience aspect that parents or facilities or you know care homes for incontinent adults making sure it's convenient for them is is something that we always have to think about and that's why 
disposable diapers are so popular that the trade-off between sustainability and convenience hasn't really swung the full way of sustainability yet. So having a semi-reusable diaper, um, or at least a portion of the diaper that's reusable is huge. And then as you said, if that non-reusable portion is then biodegradable, compostable, you know, somehow improving the end of life of that portion of the diaper, that combination could have a huge impact on the industry and and kind of the trajectory of sustainability within the industry. And that, yeah, it's a great, great point there for sure. So I think that was everything we, we I wanted to ask. <laughs> um, I, again, I thank you so much for joining the podcast and kind of running us through the entire gamut of, of the core and all of the complexities and challenges and trade-offs that need to be considered when designing or making changes to a core. So Tafane, thank you so much for your time and your, your explanation about core. And I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for welcoming me to the podcast. I really enjoyed that time. We were happy to have you. This episode was brought to you by Cotton Incorporated's Cottonworks, the free online resource for the textile, apparel, and non-woven industries. With hundreds of easy-to-search resources at your fingertips, Cottonworks is your go-to tool for producing outstanding cotton products and finding the global suppliers you need. Are you interested in exploring absorbent cotton for your hygiene needs? Cottonworks has free sourcing directories available to help. Just visit cottonworks.com slash nonwovens dash sourcing. Discover what's possible with cotton. Create a free account today at cottonworks.com, or you can connect with them directly to help you find what you need at nonwovens at cottoninc.com. As we said in the episode, we would obviously prefer if you came and talked to us and our core experts like Tefane before making any changes to your core so that we can help you anticipate and troubleshoot any issues. But if you choose not to, you now know what core designs are most popular in the market right now and which are growing in popularity for the future. And also know why you might or might not choose, say, a channel core design over a compound core design. You also learned what amount of adhesive add-on, what application patterns, and what application placements can give you the core designs that you are looking for. So if you choose not to come talk to us first, you are at least ahead in knowing what to anticipate when changing your core design. If you're interested in learning more about the absorbent core or reducing the weight of your absorbent core, we have two webinars available for you to watch, and I've included the links to those in the show notes. And as I just mentioned, if you have questions or concerns, or just wanna make sure you have considered any challenges when you make a change to your own core design, reach out to Bostic and our core experts like Tefane will be happy to discuss your changes and ideas and explore any potential issues to consider. We'll have a link to our core meeting request form in the show notes. Attached to Hygiene is brought to you by Bostic and is hosted by me, Jack Hughes. It is produced and edited by me with the help of Paul Andrews, Michelle Tonkovitz, Emery Chernis, and Nikki Ackerman at Green Onion Creative. Our theme music is by Jonathan Boyle. We'd also like to extend a special thank you to our guest today, Tefane Rambo, and you can connect with her on LinkedIn. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.